I'm going to try it. No. Okay. I broke it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she sure did. My last name is actually in the spell on the agenda. I'm booking this now called the Bylaw itself. Your last name? LRB with an E, not LRB with an A. Yeah. 8.1. I noticed that too. Thanks. It was just installed on the first one. On the first one? Yeah, and then LRB after that. I think it's okay on the actual bylaw. It's just actually on the agenda. Yeah, the agenda. I apologize for that, but the the agenda is is correct, or um, the bylaw is correct. Okay, thank you. Fifty-nine. No. Sure. No, it's a minute early. Don't he'll lead you astray in a heartbeat, that guy. I'd like to call a meeting to order and welcome everybody to our meeting tonight. Moved by Councillor Corbett, seconded by Councillor McGuinness, that this meeting be open at 7 p.m. All in favor, carried. Moved by Councillor McGinnis, seconded by Councillor Corbett, that the minutes of the regular meeting of Council held May 9th, 2023, and a special meeting of Council held May 15th, 2023, be adopted as circulated. All in favor? Gary? Is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest? Okay. Presentations and delegations from Michael Mulvaney. Mm -hmm. So you stand up or no? Matters. I'm uh, Mike Mulvaney from uh, Vicoin Nationals. We host a race event. At Bonfield Racetrack. Uh, I was trying to apply for a special per uh, event permit basically for the Saturday, which would be the uh, 2nd July 2nd, basically so we can have not drag racing, but just so our starter bands at nine o'clock for the event. I have talked to a couple of your event coordinators, like out of Toronto and stuff like that. And a lot of the time, I know they have the provincial bylaw and stuff that's till 11 o'clock, but municipal bylaws and city bylaws basically supersede it. So like it's basically get permission. That's why I'm here basically to see if I get a special permit for it. It's only one night of the year. It's not going to be 50 other people asking for the same event. It's just, and uh, basically if we do raise some money for charity, like we do uh, out of North Bay, the one child. So I mean, it's not like we're making money at this event. It helps the racetrack out a bit, but basically uh, we try to help our community a lot too, right? So if there's any concerns or anything like that it's basically in a nutshell just just music not drag racing or nothing like that it's nice to have the band start like we do a, we did a firework display last year too so that would be in the mix too so it's for the band only not just the for, band just the not band. for racing no no the racing just does their regular schedule any questions how many bands two bands a Tom Petty tribute and a Leonard Skinner tribute band. They start at nine o'clock and they'd be finished by 1230. So 
You said that the racing, I think, ends at six o'clock. Six. So, what are you doing from six to nine? Eating. Eating basically, basically, people get out, they go back to their campers. A lot of people are camping out there. So, they go back to their campers, basically, get ready, put on some cologne, their dancing shoes. And so, what if you started the bands at eight? Well, it's just a, it's the bands that we have, they have a really good light show. Like, we had them last year, we had them eight o'clock, and it was done. They had the, we basically, had them done by 11 o'clock well that's fine and dandy but it's you know kind of a night a night event is kind of a better kind of venue where you can stay up like it's not where there's going to be a pile of music blaring till 2 30 or 3 o'clock in the morning you know what i mean but there there are there is racing though up till six o'clock is yes. that what you're saying yeah and then this is for the music and the just uh, just the music like they have a, a licensed area right where they have the stage and, and stuff yeah. yeah so basically be confined into that and then uh like we do awards and we have some other uh events like uh elching contests and all this kind of biker stuff you know what i mean in between <laughs> that they run up to that it's show and shine. yeah yeah show and shine oh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> just just a bunch of other things like uh i do like a i am see it for a couple hours basically we just pull people up and get uh all our other little events so they aren't really that loud it's just that to have a nighttime show with the lighting like last year we spent thirty six thousand dollars on a bands on our bands which was way too much this year i'm not spending that much it wasn't my idea for that kind of money but we spent all this lighting show for the lighting and stuff like that most of these bands like if you go see them in a club or something like that they're set up basically with lights and stuff yeah. for them to be in the spotlight more than anything right and it and what time it finishes at 12 30. And sorry, uh, talk to me about the fireworks. So the fireworks happens when? Uh, probably about 11 o'clock. Last year we did it at, I think, quarter to 11. We waited, you guys had yours, I think, was at 10. I Don't quote me on the time, but there was fireworks down here. Mm -hmm. And then that was done. And then we wait, because I had a, like a guy from the fire department basically do the fireworks for us. And then we just waited till the year guys was done, then we did ours. Sorry, from the Bonfield Fire Department? No, no, he's a... Uh, uh, Assistant Chief from uh, London Fire Department. So the fireworks is at 11? 10, 10, between 10 and 10, 11, between the two bands, basically we do the fireworks. So the first band would start at nine o'clock. They basically do about an hour, hour and 15 minutes set. And then between that, we do the fireworks. And then the next, the feature band comes on. And the fireworks is Saturday night, right? Yes. Yeah. All the noise will be contained in one night. And when's our fireworks? Saturday night at dusk. Uh, okay. And then we're done. And then we're done. Yeah. And we'd be willing to uh, donate a contribution to your own event too. Like we. How many? Uh, how many people are you anticipating the event this year? Probably five thousand. I would say last year we had uh, twenty nine hundred, and it's already like we've been marketing it basically at the motorcycle shows in Toronto. It's going to turn into a big event because everybody likes to watch motorcycles race, right? So, mm -hmm. and people like to get away from the Toronto, like I'm from down south myself originally. You go to Cayuga, St. Thomas, uh, it's good, but it's not really, it's nice to, you know, people make a vacation out of it, right? So they can mm -hmm. see the north. And so sorry, where are people camping? At the racetrack itself, they have camping spots and everything here and that holds five thousand people to well camp? no there's a lot of in and out traffic like we i think we had uh i think 1200 people probably camp there last year for the weekend yeah two nights anyway okay um is there a motion there is a motion for council to consider moved by councillor mcginnis seconded by councillor corbett Whereas the Bonfield Event Park will be hosting the V Twin Nationals on July 1st to July 3rd, 2023. And whereas a request has been submitted by the event coordinator to allow the entertainment to run from 9 p.m. July 1st and run until 12:30 a.m. July 2nd, be it hereby resolved that council approves this request. So I, 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 I think 11 is ample time. I'm sorry. It's just um, there's a lot of uh, contention around this issue right now. 
So what do you mean by contention? Uh, there's the noise and uh, there's, you know, uh, people that live in close proximity. Not just your event. Sorry, yeah, not just your event. event. Yes, yeah, so not, yeah, not, right. your, yeah. not your event. And so I'm really hesitant to let it go beyond 11. Um, I think 11 is, uh, is ample time for... Uh, you, I mean, we have some events coming up as well, and we are going to be respectfully done. Our bands are done at 11. We'll be done at 11. I don't know. I love what the event park's doing. I, I like them here. I, I respect small businesses. Um, I'm from Hamilton. Gage Park was always that, that bone to pick with, with local residents that lived very close to Gage Park, and, and they used it for big festivals and events a few times a year and they always got permits to to extend their their noise bylaw from from 11 till 12 or 12 30 for big concerts and big events and it was limited it was two or three days a year i don't know it, I know it it's worked finding that balance i think right that's just my well, we could offer it's... offer the local people that are around it like free tickets stuff like that but yeah. myself I have three live bands to play at my own health shop yeah, yeah. in West in West Nipissing. Nobody says anything about it, right? Like just it's one night a year. I I like when I've talked to Bontill, they're not gonna push the envelope to get another night and another night and another night. It's Canada Day, really. It's a day for celebration, really. And I do see um if sorry, your worship if I could. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um uh I I did see and recognize the, um, the success of last year. And if this is going to be kind of that premier event for the, uh, for the year, um, I, I would lean on, you know, if this is the event that uh, we would consider. Um, if we're going to consider one time, I think this is the event that would uh, warrant that given the success that you've had. But. So are we stuck at 12.30? Maybe, does it have to go all the way to 12.30? I mean, that's... Uh... Well, it's just for basically, <laughs> a band takes about an hour and a half, basically. They do an hour and 15 minutes set, and then it takes about 15 minutes to half an hour between sets from the, nobody wants to share drums, right? So <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're, they're artists, right? So by the time they get in between that, and then you have a, a little commentating in between, first band goes, you're 10.30. So by the time the other band goes on, you know what I mean? It's, so, so I don't know this is a small uh, concession, but what if you moved it up to 8.30 and then you were done by midnight? Like, would that, would that be okay? If that's what you'd want, that'd be fine. To me at 12.30, 12 o'clock, I'm not, a, I, I go yeah. to bed by nine o'clock usually myself during the week, right? So. <laughs> so at 12, people are like, so at 12.30, people are still milling around and leaving, right? Yeah. So that's really one, one yeah. thirty, two o'clock in the morning yeah. that people are still there and uh you know they're not quiet at this point so there's still <laughs> yeah. there's still noise yeah. um, no, exactly. um so uh, i don't know maybe till, yeah. till midnight i uh and if it's the one a one-time thing it's not that's uh, your deal <laughs> yeah this year this year yeah, yeah. So there's no much, that's good yeah. Um, you know, ongoing. What time I would do that, respect what, that it is a, a big yeah. event. What time would that put your fireworks at? Just before fireworks done by 11? Yeah, we'd have to sneak them in, basically. That's so I say by the time the fireworks took like about well, 15 minutes to do. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it cuts it tight. But. Well, if you guys are paying for a band and people are paying to go in there. Yeah. Um, I know what it's like. I I know our own uh, parties. We have people don't people don't want to leave at twelve o'clock. But if if everything was shut off, shut down by twelve thirty, and I don't mean all the people gone, but the bands were shut down. Yeah, at they would they'd all be shut down because last year it was eleven o'clock. So I had a another guy named Johnny Rock. He does an acoustic show. As you can barely even hear it, you know what I mean. And it was like uh, that's what. It's campfire music after that, basically, right? I'm sorry, he was finished at 11? Last well, he played until so. probably, it wasn't an amplified really thing. It was just like a small speaker or whatever. Right, like, and that's. So, and, and like that was just bound to be respectful because uh, Lisa told me that. She said, they can't do it past 11. I said, well, right. with the light shows and stuff like that, kind of wrecks it for the bands, right? right? That was the biggest complaint for the bands last year. Well, don't say we're going to be done at 11 and you end up doing, being finished at 1230. 
ask for the time that you want. Yep. And council should make that decision. 12, 12 30 that. would be good with the fireworks. So we're cutting the fireworks in between the two bands, like just from the time. Bands, it's a, if not, I cut bands off short just because the bands, I don't know if you ever dealt with bands, they're kind of finicky sometimes or they're, I don't know, lackadaisical. They don't really, it's, it's a job. To me, it's a job. I just get up there, do my set, bang, I'd be, you know, I've got nine, nine to 10, 15, bang, 10, 16, my stuff would be packed and I'd be gone. You know what I mean? But they drag on stuff. So, so I'd be in favor of going to 1230. Uh, but 1230 is 1230. Like yeah, again, we are we are very we're walking a fine line with our neighbor yep. neighbors of uh, in that neighborhood. So um, if 1230 all of a sudden is you know no, 115, then yeah. obviously that's where you know we're going to get ourselves in more hot water. With no, those exactly. Neighbors, right? So and we want this to be an ongoing event. Absolutely. We're you know out of make keeping everybody happy. Right. Because even that like last year, I said, oh, do you want me to go talk to the neighbors? The neighbors, I'm pretty uh, sociable. And I don't know if there's a way to communicate with your riders that as they're leaving at yeah, don't 32, be like don't yeah, yeah. be uh, don't be gunning it out of there. Just usually to... we we sit at the gate. We have our own security staff that yeah. basically works the gate, and we just tell everybody like we we basically vet them before they leave. You yeah. know what I mean? You don't want somebody drunk, no stuff like that. Like and last year, even Lisa said that she goes, "I can't believe you guys do all this stuff." Like even even that, I'm up at six o'clock in the morning driving around. And I pick any garbage up off the streets and stuff like yeah. that. I don't like glittering. So it's yeah. uh, oh. to decant 3,000 people is going to take, you know, so 1230. I'm just saying it definitely turns into 1, 1 So that's when pe but people are leaving and still noisy. But, so that's right. But, but will... you can't shut the world down. Right. If, you, if we say 1230, it's 1230. And, and if they mess up on it, then no, next time you come back, no. no. Yeah. But people have to go home. People have to get yeah. in their cars, go home. People are going to camp there. And, and they have to understand drivers, the like neighbors just... are not happy with it. So to start with, you've got to mark against you to start with. So <laughs> it's not, you. uh, yeah. Yeah. you're noisy. <laughs> you're noisy. So I don't know if council supports that till 1230 and I don't want to say, well, 11 o'clock or 1130. We'll give you a time, and that's when you have okay. to be. You have Appreciate to it. be finished, and and the people have to understand that. Oh, well, they'll understand. And be super respectful when they're leaving; that they're yeah. not opening up all their big pipes and just yeah. like ripping yeah, them yeah. the street, right? Yeah. Like just yeah. make, right. I mean, I get they're loud bikes either way, but yeah, but it's, there's, there's it's a way just, to ride. I, when I come into my own town at night, I live in River Valley. It's like I got a really super loud exhaust on my bike, and it's the same thing. If I come into town really hot. I right. can make it really loud, but I don't. I put through. Did you drive your bike through town last night? And people ask me that. I'm like, yeah, yeah. It was like one o'clock, one right. thirty in the morning, or whatever. I'm like, yeah, yeah. But it's you know, it's all come. Have some discretion. It, even at the bike night event that we do every Sunday, it's you get a couple of dummies come in there and they act stupid, like start racing around the parking lots and stuff like that, and it wrecks it for everybody, right? Yeah. So it's nice to have community events. It's nice. This I think will benefit Bonfield. Like I'd like to get the town more involved in it, kind of stuff. Like even with the parade. Uh, that's what I say with that. Like, we would make a donation for your parade, whatever you want, and we'll throw a thousand bucks at you. You know what I mean? That's not a bribe or nothing like that. But no, it's, it's not. No, but the, the community. Like, everybody gets that. You get a hamburger and get a cheeseburger. You know, but, uh, it, it's, it, it's something because we're coming to your town and inconvenience maybe some of the people there where that helps out too. You know, like, not, we're not making a pile of money off this. Anything we do, we do the one child charity that we do make. And it's, you know, I, we didn't, it cost us $15,000 last year. Sorry, and you said you did this last year yeah. as well. Yeah. And what time did it go till last year? Uh, 11 o'clock. 11, okay, yeah. but you had that acoustic personnel. Well, and the bands were a little different too. They Then they got all grumpy because it was like everybody, bands want to play till like three o'clock in the morning. It's like, no, yeah. I just walk up, shut off the cord. No, you're done. Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay I'm gonna read it. Moved by Councillor McGinnis, seconded by Councillor Corbett. Whereas the Bonfield Event Park will be hosting the V Twin Nationals on July 1st to July 3rd, 2023. And whereas a request has been submitted by the event coordinator to allow the entertainment to run from 9 p.m. July 1st and run until 12.30 a.m. And I'm going to add sharp. <laughs> <laughs> 
That changes Be it hereby resolved that the council approves of this request. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. I wasn't on board until the sharp came in. So okay. what, I'll, uh, what would you want to like? I'll get a check made just before your events and stuff like that. Just uh, you guys can donate it to a charity, whatever you want. If you want to put it towards your own firework display or whatever like that. Yeah, if you contact our CAO. Okay. Yeah, you have my email. Okay. Same that, okay. Okay. Thank you. Great. Awesome. Okay. That's it. Thanks <laughs> a lot. Thanks, guys. Thank and uh, make sure you come to Viewpoint Nationals. <laughs> yeah. I, I swear a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. Nice you. Okay. Minutes and reports from municipal committees and boards. Planning advisory. Uh, we have not had a meeting. We have not have a, had a meeting, but I wish to uh, say that I regret that our uh, manager of planning is leaving us. And uh, I wish her all the best. I know that we're going to miss her. And uh, uh, we'll have to move to see how we're going to handle that department. Fire department. Uh, we have not had a meeting since the last one, but we have one on uh, June 6th at 6 p.m. Uh, most of the council also uh, did um, emergency management training uh, one day last week in East Ferris. When's your tax meeting? June 6th at 6 p.m. Recreation and fitness. June 5th. You're going to be busy, Steve. When am I not? Library. So I was um, not at the last meeting. Again, we are going over uh, the policies and procedures and updating them. Uh, there was discussion at the uh, library meeting that um, the Library Act was updated. And so now we uh need seven meetings per year we're already at five so we discussed um canceling the next few meetings until september so that's good idea. yeah that's uh, that's kind of where we're at unless there's an emergency of course or you know we need to, to get together and there's some activities coming up the book sale etc so general government nothing, uh, nothing. please services we have a conference coming up next week. Uh, I don't believe Andre is coming. And um, uh, Rusty, the uh, police service support yes. member. We, we did, um, we did be, our uh, municipality was part of the interview uh, process for the uh, detachment commander and I believe that uh, uh, McMullen Bill Staff Sergeant Bill yeah <clears throat> he will be uh, I believe that he was successful in the uh, we in wish the him interview. the best hmm? we wish him the best oh yes for sure he's a, a very nice gentleman and we were supposed to be writing writing questions down and writing and I was just intrigued with his, um, with everything, with his plan, with what he had to say. So I did tell him that. I said, I uh, got too busy listening. I didn't, didn't get the questions. <laughs> so then we have the emergency management. We have not had anything, but you guys were all in a training. Is there anything interesting you have to say about that? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> No, it was uh, it was just like a good uh, good overall review, but good contacts as well. So if something comes up in the future, we have people that we can kind of go to. Okay. Emergency management is um, <clears throat> emerging now. It was um, you know very um, not on the forefront, but I think with all of the natural disasters and human made disasters, it's actually coming to the the forefront, and it's important that. 
municipalities have a robust plan that Alan has uh, you know, worked really hard on. We appreciate that. Thank you. And he's keeping us uh, up to date and in compliance. And I think that something special that's happening is that we are reaching out to our neighbors. And uh, because, you know, if it's happening to us, the, the ice storm doesn't stop at the border of Bonfield. And so, you know, we're getting, uh, looking at mutual aid contracts and uh, just um, working well together, we're probably going to do a, a good exercise or, or something and really um, bringing it forward. Very good. Public work. We have not had a meeting since. Uh, do you have anything, to add? No. What about our tomorrow? Uh, to uh, this week is uh, Public Works Week, actually, in the province of Ontario. Um, so tomorrow we will be at the school at one o'clock. Uh, we have little hard hats with the Bonfield logo on them. <laughs> I love it. Um, I like what the Suya North Bay is doing. So we're going to have like name the plow truck. Mm -hmm. uh, so the kids can, when we'll just pick out of a hat or whatever, so they can name the plow truck and I'll make a little removable vinyl sticker. So maybe we could make a, an annual event out of them naming the plow truck. Um, as long as the rain holds out, it's a pretty exciting day at call that Lane tomorrow because they have their bike rodeo at the Lions Club as well in the morning. Um, so it's going, it's uh, something different that we're doing to celebrate that week. And it's a great opportunity to let the children see what we do in the community as well as what they could do in the community if that was a career choice they would like to pick. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, did you guys grade Maple Road? Lots, yeah. Very good. Must be the new grader. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I noticed it coming down tonight. <laughs> we receive our first load of calcium on Monday, actually, too. Uh, oh, yeah. This Monday, yeah. Did you say remova removable sticker on the snow globe? <laughs> yeah. Good, because I'm not driving the old uh, snow goose or something. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Um, re reports and this pen drives me crazy because you keep plucking it. <laughs> <laughs> then put it down. <laughs> reports from non-municipal committees and boards. Phenom. Well, we don't have a committee of that, but we did go on a conference, and uh, Donna and I. And what did you find most interesting? Um, I. Uh, liked the politicians. I know that's a funny thing to say, but uh, there was a bear pit, right? And so they actually had the Minister of uh, Health and uh, the Minister of Transportation, and they were fielding questions. Um, and there was the Minister of MMH too there, uh, and they were fielding questions. So it was uh, very interesting, you know, there. Usually there's a fireside chat and someone's asking them questions. They were actually taking questions from the municipalities so it was very interesting giving answers to <laughs> I don't know if the answers are the good answers but there was lots of answers I found it very interesting and I don't know um, how many would but the fact that the Northlander is going to be back in mm -hmm. in uh, running the ONR was there and put on a presentation I thought that was pretty interesting and and maybe a good thing for Northern, Northern Ontario. Uh, North Bay Mattawa Conservation. We have a meeting tomorrow, four o'clock. Four o'clock. No, we have Castle Home. Um, Nikki, there is a meeting come out and up, coming up, I believe on the 29th of May, and that's to do with Castle Home and meeting with the city of North Bay and all the mayors in the area. Um, and since I'm going to be gone, I hope that you will attend. Yes, I've heard that And then also, I'm sure that the municipalities will meet again after this and hope that you could ask them not to meet the following week because I'm going to be gone on a conference again. So, um, if you could just arrange it for, or ask them, arrange it so we can be part of it, because I know that they do want us there. We've been invited, we've been invited back there. So, and I don't know if you 
wants to go or I appreciate the offer, but I actually have a conflict because my wife wants okay. to cast them. So um Bonfield nonprofit council. Yes, we have a meeting tomorrow. Okay. Uh, any notice motion? No. Nope. Uh, introduction and consideration of bylaws. Moved by Councillor Corbett, second by Councillor Van Guinness. Whereas Council deems it expedient to pass three readings of the following bylaw at this session, be it hereby resolved that a bylaw to deem part of registered plan. 36M542 in the Township of Bonfield, not to be part of a registered plan of subdivision for the purposes of section 50 of the Planning Act, be read a first, second, and third time, passed in number 2023-21, and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk, sealed with the seal of the corporation, and be engrossed in the bylaw book. All in favor? There's one more. Yes. Moved by Councillor McGinnis, seconded by Councillor Corbett. Whereas Council deems it necessary and expedient to pass three readings of the following bylaw at this session, be it hereby resolved that a bylaw to stop up, close, and sell parts of the original shore road allowance in front of Broken Lot 26, concession 11, being part 136R. 15050, Township of Bonfield, District of Nipissing. We read a first, second, and third time, passed in number 2023 22, and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk, sealed with the seal of the corporation, and be engrossed in the bylaw book. All in favor? Carry. Oops. There's some on both sides. You just have to find your name. There's yeah. stickers on both sides of the page. That's fine. <coughs> Nicole. Okay. Right here. And some on that side as well. There's two stickers. Oops. Oh. Displacement. Moved by Councillor Featherstone, seconded by Councillor Clark, that Council approve the general accounts for the Township of Bonfield as indicated in the disbursement report dated May 23rd, 2023, in the amount of $89,742.24. All in favor? Carried. We have a motion. Do we have a motion for this, Andre, for the cancellation of the- Of the summer meetings? Yes, yes. we do. Moved by Councillor Featherstone, second by Councillor Clark, that the following, following regular council meetings 
be canceled in their entirety, July 25th, August 22nd, and that the council meeting schedule for August the 8th, 2023, be rescheduled to August the 15th, 2023, and that a special meeting of council be scheduled in accordance with section 240 of the Municipal Act as amended if required. Um, I'll, I'll ask the question before. If, is it during that time, have you noted when AMO is that? Yeah. AMO, I believe would be the following week. Oh, so this won't affect no. it at all. Okay, all in, yeah. all in favor? No, no, I have, I have a question. I have a question. Oh, okay. um, so we are significantly behind getting our budget this year uh, out and we have some significant work to do as council from strategic planning process. And so I am, uh, my initial concern is, uh, I'm not sure that losing these meetings is actually good for our taxpayer at this point. So uh, I'm wondering what the impact would be on our budgeting process or strategic planning process. And as we get ready for upcoming negotiations, we have lots on our plate in the council, so. Yes, um, so hopefully council will see the budget in June. And then our strategic plan will happen after that. And there'll be public meetings for the budget. Uh, and there could, the resolution does allow us to still have council meetings in July, should we need to have those meetings, or we could have a special meeting to accommodate any vacation or other time that we need to. Um, those months tend to be very busy. So we could, we can just see them when it's, when, when everyone is available. Doesn't mean we won't have them. Any more questions? <clears throat> So, so vacations have been approved and there's a schedule going then, and that's why these dates are unavailable or? On August 8th date is the only date that is not available from the staff. Okay. It has been uh, customary, as I explained in my report, that due to the summer um, and staffing, those, those two meetings have always been canceled. Uh, since I've been with the town for the last 20 years. Um, if council, if this council doesn't wish to continue that process, then we just put them back on the schedule. I think just to, to Jason's point, um, you know, maybe we can look at it next year where we're brand new and it has been a slow start. And I feel like, you know, we've got the official plan as well. I mean, there, there's, a lot to do. I um, I would be hesitant to uh, to can't to cancel and to cancel and then you know tentatively book if we need it. I think it would be better to keep them and sort of do it the other way. And then if they're you know if we can cancel them, but that's my. I agree. <clears throat> we have a lot. Yeah, we just have a lot on the go. So, <laughs> I uh, have to ask. Yeah, sorry. All in favor? So, defeated. Um, but just one sec though. There, this, uh, to do with the vacation schedule, should that? Yeah, there's two things. So the eighth, mm -hmm. we can change. Do you want us to change that at eight? But that then? Can do you want to speak or what we can do is defeat the motion and at the next council meeting, then I'll bring back another motion to change the uh, August 8th meeting to the 15th. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. And um, I'm not sure if it would be worth considering passing a motion. I, I understand it's the summer and um, just to provide as much flexibility as possible where perhaps Zoom meetings would be acceptable yeah. Uh, for those for those times, just to accommodate staff, if you happen to be, mm -hmm. or or any of the council, like for the for those summer months, maybe that's something that council would consider. But uh, also, the twenty second is AMO, right? So that's you were canceling that meeting, but it is AMO. But I mean, you can always zoom from AMO mm -hmm. as well, right? So, well, I certainly don't want to interrupt your vacation schedule, so. Whatever is is there, I think that's fair um, to have that 
to have that set out. So it has to come by motion, the next meeting. And then we'll consider if that's, if and we should be able to tell how things are going. And if it looks like, it looks like we don't have much on the agenda or there's not much to do, then maybe we, how, how long would we have to give before we would cancel it? The week before? The week yeah. before. So Except then. Except that it would be, it's two staff members vacation. So they have plans and that to, to move the other date. But we can bring it back just to say that we can move that eight mm -hmm. just to a different yeah. date. Well, can yeah. we not use this and move the eighth to the 15th right now? Can we not just go ahead and do that? I don't, we don't, no one I think has a problem with moving the eighth to the 15th. If that's okay. Yeah, but I yeah. think if it came back, like if it's cleaner to just bring yeah. it back okay. and we pass okay. it next to yeah. like, okay. I don't think anybody's like super yeah. concerned about that. Yeah, it's that's just, not a problem. Yeah. Yeah. We'll bring that back to the next council meeting and then we'll look at the others. If that it's not written in stone, although that we didn't pass it here, it's, it's fine. We can look at it as we get closer. Should we defer it? Yes. Defer it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're, we're all thinking at the yes. same time. <laughs> yes. yes. There. And I will sign it. Right? Yes. Oh, here is a whole bunch of stuff. Your Worship, I'm just wondering if you should call a vote on the deferral. Only uh, just so we don't get tripped up. Just because we all, yeah. Yeah. Just maybe. Yeah. Everybody in the favor of deferral. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just don't want to. Like, I'd hate to, for somebody to come I back could, and say we didn't do it. I vote. could click. Yeah, I could click. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'd rather do that than that, what we're doing here. I know. <laughs> it's a lot of rating. I have a question on, do we have to get all these informational things from other townships? Um, it, I, I suppose. May. Yeah. <laughs> it is information purposes only. If members of council wish to support, then you just let me know and I will bring a motion forward for the next meeting. For these, I have no motions tonight. It's information okay, and they circulate it to us and then they asked to circulate it to council. Okay, so. Um, Some of these we've already supported in the past, but it's just mm -hmm. to let you know that others are following in our. Uh, so our if lead. I quickly go through it yes. and you guys just say yes or no. I have a, a question. So, so the ones that were, because what happens is it is a domino effect because then this motion goes to another municipality and then that municipality. So can we pass something that if we've already um, agreed to it. Not to bring it back. Not to bring it back because if, then mm -hmm. we're not repeating, right? Yep. So, okay, so that would help, I think. If that's what <laughs> council wishes, yeah. then once yeah. we've brought it, then I won't bring it back. Right, and we, we've already agreed to it one mm -hmm. way or the other. So okay. Then, Okay. Well, that just helps everybody, I think, because we could end up seeing the same thing 30 times. Yes, because, yes. Uh, 444 yeah. times. <laughs> well, I don't know that everybody would be in favor. No. Okay, I'm just going to go by number, okay? okay. Number 10.2, Port Francis resolution in the OPI crisis. And yes, please. Yes. Yes. You got that, Andre? Yes. Um, 10.3, uh, proposed new provincial planning statement. Yes. Yes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> May as well do it all. Uh, update on proposed locate fees. I think that was that very, was very good that they uh, moved it forward to 2024. Yes. So that was a good thing to uh, to defer it, but it's only uh, only an update, right? And then the next one is uh, the Bonfield Event Park 2023 yeah. uh, itinerary. Well, I have a question on that. Um, so I was looking at the agreement and um, this was received on May 10th. Yes. And in the agreement, it does say that they have to get this into us by April 15th. Yes, it does. And so they were late. Yes, they were. Did they contact staff to say that they would be late? Not that I'm aware of. 
and what are the repercussions? Because, you know, again, you know, it's a simple rule to, to follow. So what happens now? <laughs> Do, uh, you know, the April 15th date is to, I guess, give people notice. And so if we don't receive something by April 15th, are we presuming that there's nothing happening at the park? Like what, you know? I'll ask the deputy clerk to jump in at, at some point as well. <laughs> I'm sure there's some past on this, but I have no idea. Yeah. There, I don't believe there's anything in the agreement that states if you are late. Um, <clears throat> oh no, that's. Uh, I'm not sure. I would. I wasn't part of the agreement. Yes. Yeah, so there but, are. Go ahead. You you do have the agreement, but there is a clause in the agreement, and if you're in contravention of any component of the agreement, then on upon conviction there is a fine. So we could take them to court, and we could have a conviction done that it would be um, not in compliance with the agreement yeah. so um, it's going to cost us money for them yeah I, yes. right i I, so. I guess my point is is that we have an agreement yes. and uh you know there's two parties to an agreement and one party is not actually following the rules of the agreement so I, I'm, not, I'm not sure did this happen last year you know is it a pattern kind of thing yeah and i i, I don't think that's something that we're aware of but we okay. could certainly send a letter <clears throat> Stating that you know this is part of the agreement, please ensure in the, in the ongoing years that you do receive okay. this information prior to April fifteenth. Yeah. And again, it's a pretty simple thing to do, right? Uh, if you if you kind of know, or even just to contact the township and say, look, we don't have everything, but here's what we've got, and you know more will be coming. Um, yes. Just to honor the agreement, right? Okay. So, yeah. sorry. Yeah. The next one is the city of Cambridge. Anybody want that supporter to improve municipal codes of conduct? It, it's to do with workplace and uh, harassment. Oh yes, I think we're gonna support that. <laughs> I'll, I'll double just, check. I, I, I think believe we already, we already did, yeah. but I'll double check. And if not, then I'll bring it back. Okay. And then the city of Cambridge, Highway Traffic Act amendments. That's to do with the uh, speed uh, enforcement yeah. system. I think we should support that. Yeah. And then the next one is the municipality of Tweed, pole infrastructure. No, and and what is one, that just one. so that more the more eight, uh, companies use the polls? I believe uh, the public works manager uh, could speak to that. I don't think that the, I don't wanna say the municipality of Tweed hasn't done their homework, but Hydro owns so many polls, Bell Canada owns so many polls, uh, Hydro rents their polls to Bell Canada, Bell rents polls to Hydro, et cetera. Um, unless they get something down the CRTC, right? It's their property, like they own the infrastructure. I understand the purpose. Uh, we actually had a discussion briefly, just, uh, you know, maybe putting bylaws in place or a set of rules that those companies have to follow to put their infrastructure into our road systems. Uh, so when they say, hey, we want to get a permit, we have our rules already ahead of the time. Uh, so maybe that's the line they're trying to think of, but uh, unless the CRTC regulates it, I don't foresee. Okay. We just come we back got to the 10, heritage. 10. Oh, I missed one. Yeah, 10.7. Oh, Highway Traffic Act Amendment. No, no you did that no, this one. Is the heritage and then this one. is the town, the Lincoln. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I skipped that one. I saw that. One. Okay. Yeah. Um, Municipal Heritage Register. Anyone have any comments about that? Well, I think it's a good one to support. It's, okay. it's asking for. You're not making a very good case, yeah. and I have more yeah. <laughs> No, these are just motion be all <laughs> It's not going to come back. We haven't seen this one before, and I this think, one. 
is about <laughs> the municipalities having control of their heritage uh, sites, right? Especially in light of Bill 23, which is like demolishing all of the other oversight that we have, right? So. Well, that's okay. I don't think I'm at the next meeting. You'll have to read it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the last one you're supporting. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, school board elections. Sorry, 10.9, did you want to bring back? No. What, what? The, the poll infrastructure? I think you 10. said it's not was 10. Any. That was 10.8. No? Did we say no to that? <laughs> yes. Yes. No, man. Yes. Yes. No. <laughs> no. If it got flagged deep, I'm sure that it would come back again for yes. other yes. municipalities. Okay. Right. Yeah, so keep an eye on it. Yeah, we'll keep our eye out <laughs> okay. in case you want to say yes next time. I, and I believe we've dealt with the school board elections. We have. Here. We did. Yes. Yeah. But I think we want it to happen for sure that yes. we don't have to pay for the school board yeah. election. Yeah, that's correct. So do you want to support it again? <laughs> Does that make it stronger? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> and we dealt with the next one too, the insurance cost. Yes. Yeah. So we've already dealt with that one. We're not, but so we're not doing those two, right? Well, we, I think we've already done one, yeah. Okay, then the next one we have is the Blanchard's Landing Report. No, don't, did we miss 10.11? The, the Township of Armour? Aerodrome, Aerodrome resolution about having boats and planes on your strips. I believe we did. That's not that. on there. Yeah. Ten no, point in one. Package. Interesting. It's not on her. Oh, but it's on her agenda. Yeah. It's on the agenda. So oh. Here. Okay. I I did have it, but I didn't. Uh... Where did I put it? I guess it's. But it looks like it's pretty specific to the Township of Armour. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we don't we don't need that one. We don't need it. Yeah, we're there. Yeah. I don't have yeah, it on my agenda. Yeah, so. Probably. Doesn't make sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now we'll go back to Blanchard's Landing report. Uh, did everybody read that? Yes. Yes. Um. I have the motion here. But I know they suggested that we have two people on that committee. Uh, I also know that it's, we are, according to our solicitor, we're not able to be part of an incorporation. I question that because the economic development, we, <clears throat> we were all a corporation. However, when you read further, ever, there's they're just corporate, uh, the municipalities in that in, uh, economic development. So um, I'm satisfied with that. There's nothing we can do about it. But I know that in order to get something done with Lake Talon down there, we have to, we have to talk about it. We have to support it. We must do that. There was an emergency there two weeks ago the dock is like this. I'm not kidding you. It's halfway upside down. And they they had to bring the person to the, the business owner, David Humphrey's place. And so I think what I'm asking is to talk about it, to support this uh, group that has been trying for the last three or four or more years to try and get something done with Lake Talon. And I know at this end, there's not two, there's, we don't have a lot of property on Lake Talon, uh, residents on Lake Talon at this end, at that end that we are, but up the other way is uh, there's quite a number of homes when you go in Shields Point Road. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a huge concern that we keep Lake Talon looked after. And the more we talk about it and get the province to get, they don't have any money, too bad. They have money for everything else. Yeah, I was gonna say, can we not hold the province, like it's a health and safety hazard 
why like why they should be fixing their stuff uh, exactly and that's but i read where they don't have money well neither yeah, do you. i read that too but um, have a whole lot more than we do and i don't believe have, it uh, have we reached out to our our mpp oh absolutely Fidelli? okay so and and nothing so happened can we invite him to a, a meeting there or I mean, we just have to keep going, right? Write letters, a letter writing campaign. I think or... so. And talk, we have to talk to the people because we don't want to lose talent. Like, mm -hmm. holy smokes. No, and I think if you start throwing health, health and safety, yes. it's always a big yes. thing. Yes. I mean, if you send pictures of the doc, you know. Well, uh, there's a business there. Um, the uh, docs last year, the, there wasn't enough water for him to use his, his, uh, boat launches there. Um, also, the one business at the end of Ghana's, a lot of people come out there. They they reap the benefit of Lake Talon as well. Sometimes both sides of the road, which I don't like, if the fire department has to go in there, they can't go in there. So things have to be monitored better. Things have to come together and i think that the only people that's going to be able to do that is us so can they still incorporate without us no pardon can they still incorporate without well, us well they could incorporate i think there's the cottagers association there are, there is the natives the uh, madajuan and the algonquins um there's more stakeholders come the conservation authority sits at the table they are meeting with the mnr there's a lot of people coming there, but we don't have any money, according to the province. But I think somebody has to put pressure on them and say, come on, look after that lake. Well, I would think if something happened at our government dock, we'd be liable. Why isn't because there's the, no liability down there? Because um, we don't own that dock. It's, no, but I mean, exactly. why isn't the yeah. government? I mean, exactly, exactly. So yeah, I agree with the report. report. Obviously, we can't be part of the corporation, but uh, I think that there's value in making sure that Bonfield's well represented in that group. Although we're not going to be the entity, the township of Bonfield will not be an entity of the corporation, but we can absolutely have representation there to ensure that um, we can. There's a two-way conversation that's happening between uh, the work that's happening and any weight that we can bring to support provincial asks and and anything. And then that also opens the, the conversation or we'll have uh, more dialogue around once there's a plan, if the municipality has a role in that plan or if there's an ask of the municipality, it can come back for further consideration or future consideration by council. But that will be down the road. Unfortunately, not part of the corporation, but we should absolutely still be in there. And I know you're passionate about it, Your Worship, and uh, I think that's great. So uh, I think it's, it's value to ensure that we're staying uh, involved for sure. Thank you. And I, I would like to suggest this to our uh, CAO is that manager and car be part of this. She has been part of it for the last couple of years. You've been involved in the in the meetings, and I would like I would like you to stay there because you do know a lot about what has been going on with the dredging and all of that. So I don't know what council thinks. I know, um, and uh, if you and I are there, but I think that Anne's knowledge would be very helpful to us. I think Anne might be busy <laughs> with, uh, with, uh, with roads. Um, yeah. um, so it, just from my perspective, I would say that we would ask our CIO to be part of it and or her designate. So we'll leave it up to the CIO to, to make this. Like, I don't know that we, I have no problem who's going to be involved from a staff perspective. I just don't know that, like, I just want to be mindful of, I know you're working with the manager on, on workflow and all of that kind of stuff. So um, I just, it's kind of that balance for me now that we have a, a CIO, how to, where do we dip our toe in, I guess? It's yeah. Just trying to find that. My, not, my, um, my input into this is that you and I haven't been there. We haven't been at the table. Manager Carr has. Sure. And I'm not, 
Yeah, I think it's there, just that the motion says only only us. Oh, I or maybe we add or designate, and then it, it provides the opportunity for um, if the CIO would like to designate that work to a staff person, then sort of to the manager, <laughs> public person, staff person, um, that it just provides that opportunity for sure. I just, it's that balance for me of wanting to respect the CIO's role, so. Anybody else? Yeah, I don't, <clears throat> sorry. I don't know if it's up to us to delegate like who is, is doing what, right? But I like, I like that idea that leaves it open. And... Mm -hmm. So if I may um, correct in that, I mean, Public Works Manager uh, has been fantastic and has been on the committee, so they, she does have the information and all the background that we can both benefit from. Um, but it is a council decision who sits on that committee to represent Bonfield. So you can put that the, the mayor and the CAO or designate, and then if I can't attend a meeting, then I then mm -hmm. we would still have two representatives at the so, I believe that she that you do have a role in taking minutes and managing the meeting and um, getting the, the supplies and stuff for the meeting. So I think that that is a council decision on how involved the township would like to be in in that meeting. So then, if um, you or I couldn't be there, hmm. then either one of us, uh, manager Carr, could replace either one of it yes right? if you put or designate then yes yep okay oh, so i've got another question sorry so so will we still be that active then if we're not actually part of that so we would still like have the venue and if i may maybe yes. we could ask manager Carr on what her role is with the committee just so that council can be aware and then make the determination on how involved we are in that yeah um I think in the past, uh, just because of, there was no one really else, uh, although uh, public works did pay an, play an integral part in uh, trying to control some siltation releasing going down the road, uh, we did a project down there to uh, kind of take us out of that picture by doing our part um, with the conservation authorities help, of course. Um, the group had just sort of started coming back together again the last few years. Um, so it was kind of, uh, Doug LaPlante was part of that. And because there's no formal committee made with like direction on who does what and who is responsible for what, it's kind of like scattered all the time, all over the place. So I agree, they do need to come into some kind of form whether it be a committee forum or whatever, uh, because there, a, there is a lot of people at this table and it's difficult to get that kind of meeting together with uh, the MNR, the Conservation, uh, Parks Ontario, us, the Algonquins, the Calvin, like all that. Um, I think a group does need to be started with designated people looking after certain things so that it can be moving forward instead of, uh, I found it was more reflective of uh, what was happening in the past and how come instead of let's work together and move forward. Uh, so I was kind of just uh, bossy <laughs> <laughs> at the meeting. Um, and now that uh, Mayor Paquette has uh, taken over as the mayor in the township, uh, she's been brought on board as well as the mayor of uh, Calvin, sorry, Gould. Yes. yes, Mayor Gould. Um, it is a community issue. Unfortunately, it's not community property, but how do we support that? So that was kind of why I was there to promote like, yes, we are on board. Yes, we do support our community. Um, also helping Doug because he was kind of in the foreground always promoting getting this going, so. As a staff member? Uh, yes, in the past, well, because we had to have surveys done to indicate that it wasn't township property, there's a very long history as to our participation in Talon Lake. 
Mm -hmm. question. So if they incorporate, then they have to assign roles, right, to their directors, they have now a nice board. So then, you know, like we could certainly offer up things like our boardroom if they needed a place to meet and things like that. But I think administratively, this new body can take care of all of that now, right? So that we're still that arms like not unlike the the seniors housing um the way that they operate so that although you know if we had to do say fundraising or whatever for the mary that um mayor Paquette, we could you know definitely help out with things like that right because we're all you know we're, we're good at that so <laughs> can we yeah. still help out with the getting funding for them yes yeah and, that's yes, what, absolutely yes, yes i think mainly is the reason because they're not not that they're not incorporated, it, the fact that they did not have a strong group together and then they kind of like and said fall away and then they come back and try and do something again. But to me, it has become n not, not very nice down there at that lake. Have we, <clears throat> has anybody had a lawyer send like parks in Ontario parks, a letter saying that, you know. The support that we had, the support that they had was from the township was just manager car. The, there was no other mm -hmm. support that was given to that group right. from it what I understand. Poor timing, like how everything played out. I, I think that they'll have to, this group, the new corporation will have to do, um, there might be committees of that corporation, which we could probably have an active role in, uh, yeah. in supporting, but it's going to be a lobbying effort of the provincial government. It's going to be a continuous level of that. And then um, if there's a partnership piece that needs to be discussed from a funding standpoint, um, you know, that's for future consideration. My challenge, I think, is it's pretty easy for the province to actually just come in and remove the asset. And then if we, if we start going down the full liability of the province and raise the flag that, hey, you're gonna be sued if something happens, there's a chance they can come in and just remove it and be done with it. And then we're, we're that asset in the, even whatever- I think they'd now. be doing a favor. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Right, except now all of a sudden, you know, it just changes the dynamic of trying to get at something to, to be fixed and working together. working together, right? So it's just, it's that piece of good, strong government lobbying is I think what needs to happen. At one time, the municipality did maintain that dock and it, there was a beautiful dock there. And I don't know what happened. The province took it over. So that was the end of it. So I think, what needs to happen is the leadership maybe needs to switch to an advocate that's outside of the of the township or the council or this and we are now a supporting role we can support them but they have to figure out who is actually leading this organization like they need a leader well the uh, cottagers association they're they're in there, but they're they're the cottagers association. They're not incorporated or anything. They're just majorly concerned about the lake. Right. And then they brought in like and said all the different uh, agencies like MNR Conservation Authority. They're all there and they're all interested. Mm -hmm. But what what we have to do is not just be interested. How 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 are we going to resolve we what's going plan. on down there? there? Needs to be a plan. We need to get in our province's pocketbook somehow, mm -hmm. if anybody can figure that out. So, yeah. My pen is totally. <laughs> 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 okay. Where are we here? Oh, where are we? Okay. Moved by Councillor Featherstone, second by Councillor Clark. Whereas Council received the information from Mr. LaPlan on behalf of the Madajo and Economic Development Corporation, and whereas it has been determined that the township is not able to be a member of the proposed nonprofit corporation, and whereas the Council for the Township of Blonfield is interested in working with the Lake Talon 
stakeholder group to explore options of repairing Blanchard's Landing. Now, therefore, council hereby appoints the mayor and CAO or designate as, res as representatives to work with the outlined stakeholder committee to determine next steps in the efforts to rehabilitate Blanchard's Landing in the area. All in favor? Carry. Okay, the next is the Lions tax rebate requests. Moved by Councillor Featherstone, second by Councillor Clark, that council approves a minimum of what percentage rebate under the Ontario Municipal Act to the Bonfield and District Lions Club for their 2023 tax relief request. Uh, we're up to, we're allowed to give up to 40%. No, minimum is 40%. Minimum 40%. 40%. Yes. Oh. And I think that's historically what they've been getting, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's essentially, sorry. If I may, um, the request letter is for 2022, but it, any request has to be in by the February of the year, I believe, from what we're here for. The, uh, documentation that was provided. So we can't go back to 2022, we can just do forward. So this is for 2023, yeah, because there's there's a, a letter from 2018 and then mm -hmm. one from March, 2021. So was that March, 2021 for 2022? For 2021. If it had well, to let me read it. be in by February. So if I may, their request was for 2022. Um, and when I explained to uh, the Lions members um, that the, the requests should have been in before, uh, it was suggested that this letter be brought for this year. And the issue is um, with, an, uh, with the secretary um, taking on a new role, that sometimes this that task uh, was, or this request was forgotten. So that's why if you look, um, the previous one was for three years, because yeah. at that time council allowed um, the rebate to go back for the three years. To go back for the three years. Yes. Like retroactive. Yes. The council of the day allowed that request yeah. to. Oh yes, 2019, yes. 2020, 2021. Yes. And then the amount was uh, suggested and calculated and that was the total. Um, so this request would actually be for 2023. And they paid the taxes and we give them the money back, right? Yes. Yeah. So this, this rebate would not come into effect until after the budget's been approved, the levy's been set, and then we would calculate the rebate and then send them a check. But we have to give 40%. At least 40%. Why is that? It states uh, uh, municipal act. It, mm. the, um, in, in your um, agenda, there was the article regarding the rebates. Yeah. Yes. So I'll just say, uh, if I could, yeah. uh, I am fully supportive of the 40%. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that's what they've had in the past. And if that's suffice, then uh, I'm more than happy to support that. They do great work in our community. Yeah, so, I agree. Um, and then if we, sorry, we're able to do it retroactively? We're able to? Well, you should not, you shouldn't use it retroactively as opposed to make a donation in the same amount that would have been for 2022. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's... A wink is as good as a nod. <laughs> uh, <so. laughs> Uh, okay, fair enough. And then are we able, are we in a position to be able to pass that for the next three years? Can we do it moving forward as well? So that if I, these volunteers miss it, miss it yeah. that it's just taken care of for at least this term council. Like I don't want to tie up future uh, council, councils, but. Um, amend the motion. Yeah, if that's something we're able to do. Then I'm, I'm supportive of that because I think that. 
the work that they do is wonderful. So give the 40% for term of council. Yeah. Yeah. For out to the Bonfield and District Lions Clubs for 2023 tax relief request. And 24, 25. Are, you give a are we giving the donation back? Or no? Oh, yeah, and, the don and 26. And then donation. And then at the end of that, just go and for okay. another donation be made. In the amount, in the amount equal to 40% yeah. of the tax relief. 24, 25, 26. 26. Yes. And that a donation be made to the Bonfield and District Lions Club. In the same value. Yeah. In the, in the amount equal to 40% tax rebate based on the 2022. Tax rate. That a donation be made to the Bonfield and District Lions uh, Club. Yeah, equal to 40% for, uh, of the 2022 taxation rate. <laughs> Sorry. Can't do that off of the off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then. Um, I don't know that we do we have to get into the let's say if we uh, just want to go to the tax relief request. It's pretty standard, like everyone is gonna know that it's for that piece of property, right? Okay. So we don't have to get into that. I'll Weed read stuff. it. <laughs> Sorry, Your Worship. <laughs> Moved by Councillor Featherstone, second by Councillor Clark, that council approves a minimum 40% rebate under the Ontario Municipal Act to the Bonfield and District Lions Club for their 2023 tax relief request and 2024 to, should I be saying, and in the year 2020? Sure. In the years? Because well, it I might look just... like we want to give them all these years up front. Well, we do. No, well, no, we can't up no. front because we don't know what their tax rate uh, yeah. is going to yeah. be, right? For their 2023 20. tax relief yeah. request, and 2024, 2025, and 20, 2026, and that a donation be made to the Bonfield and District Lions Club equal to 40% of the 2022 taxation rate. Yeah. yeah. All in favor? Yeah, that works. Because it's 40% of the 2020 for tax rate and then the yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. tax rate. Yeah. Just make sure it doesn't it doesn't look like that yes. it's yeah that we're it's given all of that up front. Yeah. yeah. We'll be broke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, unfinished business, Penny? No. Uh, we have an agenda. Yes. I and at this time I will stop the recording. Okay. And then council can continue into in camera session. Okay. So ending the recording. <laughs>